Once you've seen enough force versus time graphs, it should automatically click in your mind that you're looking at an impulse problem. And that's because impulse is equal to the force exerted over a specific amount of time. And so that means it's equal to F delta T. So when we look at these two force versus time graphs, we can find the impulse of both of them by simply multiplying the force over the amount of time, which basically translates into the area between the x-axis and the graph. And so what do I mean by that? Well, for this first graph, we'd see that the area between the x-axis and the actual function would be this triangular area here that I'm shading right now. And over here for the second force versus time graph, we have this rectangular area, which extends from time equals zero to time equals five. And same thing for here, we're going from time equals zero to time equals five. And the main difference between these two is that here you're taking the area of a triangle, and in this one, you're just taking the area of a rectangle. And that's pretty easy. So the area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height, which is going to be one half, and the base will be five. So five seconds times the height, which is one, two, three, four, so four newtons, which equals 10 newtons times seconds. And so that's the impulse for the first graph. Now let's take a look at the second graph. So th the area of a rectangle is simply equal to base times height, which is five seconds times the height, which is one, two newtons and so that's just equal to 10 newtons times seconds. And so even though these looked a lot different at the beginning, we can see that the impulse for both of these is actually exactly the same. But this first graph is a lot more realistic than the second one. And so you're going to see this first graph probably a lot more. Because if you're going to exert a force on something, like right now, I'll pretend to punch this marker, at the beginning of the contact, the force isn't going to be as great. And then a few seconds in, you're going to be exerting your full force on it. And then when you take your hand back away from this marker, then the force will gradually go back down to zero. And so that's why this force versus time graph is a lot more realistic than this one, which in this case, you'd have to be exerting the same exact force from the moment you touch the marker to after you take your hand away.